Thank you for coming to my talk today. I'll be talking to you about asymmetries in speciation and some of the research um, that the students are doing in my lab at the moment. So in particular, we'll be talking about uh, research that we've done in chickadees, coyotes, uh, bacillus bacteria, and bird feathers, and in a tufted titmouse. So first, we'll, th we'll talk a little bit about asymmetry. Um, and, and in general, Asymmetry is defined as an unequal distribution uh, among, around some sort of plane. So um, humans are bilaterally symmetric. That means our right and left halves should be roughly equal. And there's a lot of research from plants and animals that suggests that the more evenly distributed an animal is around that bilateral axis, um, the better condition they're in. So animals that are in poor condition tend to be asymmetric, and animals that are in good condition tend to be symmetric. And you can see this uh, in human preferences. So humans tend to prefer faces um, that are symmetrical. So this face has the right sides duplicated and this face has the left sides duplicated. So hum humans in general would prefer either the face on the right or the face on the left because it's more symmetrical than the face in the middle. And those preferences um, are to a point. We don't prefer faces that are perfectly symmetrical, just those that are more symmetrical than others. Uh, but I'll be talking to you about symmetry in respect to speciation. So speciation is generally the process whereby one species gets split into multiple multiple populations and then those populations develop in, into species. Um, and typically when we think about speciation, we think about allopatric speciation. speciation. So we think about one main population um, being divided into multiple populations. So this slide shows us a picture of the Grand Canyon and our student Tiffany Dang, who's in the Grand Canyon this semester doing a study away, and she sent us some of her observations. And she has observed a bear squirrel and kaibab squirrels, and they were once one species, and they've been split into two by the Grand Canyon. Um, and interestingly... Uh, the mites that they carry, the fleas that they carry, have also been split and speciated. And the bacteria that those fleas carry, which is the bacteria that causes the plague, uh, have also been split. So thank you to, to Tiffany for sending us her observations. Um, and the consequence of symmetries in speciation is that it can actually slow down the process of speciation. So usually when we study speciation, we think about speciation, we think about it as being a clean event. And the truth is that it's rarely actually a symmetrical event. There is usually some sort of asymmetry. Um, and that asymmetry can be in, in space, in time, or in the movement of, of DNA, so the movement of individuals. And when I say the movement of DNA, I mean that one population is going to send more individuals into the other population than is happening, vice versa. So the net result of this can be that it slows down speciation and... So basically, with modern techniques, we can get um, DNA and phylogenies for any group of organisms that we that we want. And what we seem to find is that um, we find evidence of punctu punctuated equilibrium. So we find periods of rapid speciation and then other periods of very slow speciation. And we also find variation in the rates of speciation. So some groups of organisms speciate very, very quickly, while others speciate very slowly. So some of this variation could be due in part uh, to asymmetries in speciation.